And a youth empowerment program aimed at equipping Kenya's youth with technical skills to be absorbed in the local industries is set to get a boost from China through Chinese global manufacturing firm Evic International. The chairman of the Communist Party of China, Zhang Dejiang, who is in the country toward the technical and vocational education and training project run by Evic International. The project trains university students all over Kenya on mechanical, electrical, automotive, welding, uh, rapid prototyping and computer numerical control and machining skills. The Youth Empowerment Project was initiated in 2013 and has managed to equip nine technical training institutions in various counties. The project further facilitated 54 teachers to train 15,000 students. According to the Ministry of Education, the reform is hoped to bridge the youth empowerment gap and expand opportunities in the blue-collar job sector. The China Roads and Bridge Corporation has launched a corporate social responsibility report detailing some of the social projects that have been executed through construction of the standard gauge railway project. Now CRBC, the main contractor of the multi-billion shilling SDR project, has so far spent two billion shillings in CSR in setting up community projects to benefit the locals. Speaking during the launch of the CSR report, Transport PS Irungu Nyakera highlighted the need to balance public good and private interests citing that the SGR had put into account both ecological concerns as well as well-being of locals living along the corridor the project tra traverses. CRBC chairman Wen Gang, who echoed the P PSA's concern, noted that so far the SGR has seen about 12 billion shillings spent in land compensation to affected communities. Just the day after Cabinet uh, approved the extension of the standard gauge railway project to allow construction works to continue through to Naivasha, Kisumu and Malaba, Transport Principal Secretary Wilson Yakara has confirmed requisite funding has also been secured. KTN's Abi Agina has the details of this developing story. The ongoing works along Kenya's largest infrastructure project, the standard gauge railway, is fast taking shape. So far, at least 65% of the rail has been laid along the Mombasa-Nairobi circuit. The recent approval by Cabinet to extend the SGR to pass through to Naivasha to terminate at Malaba border, neighboring Uganda, is not only set to boost regional connectivity, but open up key economic zones along the northern corridor. SGR stopping in Nairobi will not be fair to the rest of the country. The SGR, which is being funded partly by the Chinese government and the Kenyan government, has so far gobbled up 327 billion shillings. The extension to Malaba is set to raise the project cost significantly. Second phase is uh, in, in, everything inclusive. everything inclusive with the nairobi having a population of over four million the highly dense populace coupled with construction of high-rise buildings could prove a challenge as to the route the railway will take we will spend 30 billion shillings on sgr if we were to compensate for a 500 meter corridor on lapset for 900 meters uh, 900 kilometers we are talking of billions of dollars for now, the government will be exploring affordable options that will go in sync with the development of the railway without getting itself into a fix, both from an environmental standpoint as well as avoiding a cost overrun brought about by relocation and compensation. Abiyagina, KTN Business. Tourism is a vital foreign exchange honor for Kenya, boasting of palm-fringed beaches and safari trails, but a two-year slump has forced hotels to shut down, cut 30,000 jobs, and set the shilling to three-and-a-half-year low, lows. Rather. The number of visitors to Kenya fell by 25% in the first five months of 2015, showing just how badly the industry has been damaged. However, all is not lost, as Tourism Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala says all is on course for tourism recovery on 
Transformers. Abiyagina spoke to Malala, who says it will not be business as usual as he drives the tourism recovery agenda that includes product development, improving infrastructure, marketing Kenya on a global stage through innovative campaigns, as well as tapping into emerging markets. Well, uh, I made a statement when I came here. We don't want business as usual. We need to change uh, the way we do, we do things in, in tourism. If it's a matter of creating innovations in incentive, for example, I have to be the first one to, to lobby for it, get government approval. And luckily, I, I got a president who listens, who appreciates the sector and endorses uh, the request that we put forward by the, by the industry. I had to be the champion of it. And if it takes the minister to jump from the sky, yeah, to encourage domestic tourism and also to portray Kenya in a fresh look, why not? I took that, I took a risk. I didn't tell my wife about it before, then. <laughs> but it was exciting. And we have more than just beach and safari. Yeah. We have other activities, other adventures. We did very successful programs in 2008, and that's why we had records in terms of arrivals in 2011-2012. These times, uh, in the last 100 days, what we have done is that we have done the framework of incentives where we can have more foreign tourists coming into the country. One is the co uh, charter incentive program because Mombasa and the coast has suffered with 30,000 loss of jobs, hotels have closed. So to spur the economy development in the coast, we decided to support the charter program and we give incentives to those charter programs. And then we also look at the safari circuit where uh, we have realized we have overpriced ourselves in the national parks and reserves. And we successfully discussed with Kenya Wildlife Service, the president intervened and uh, we have agreed now from 1st of July there will be no VAT on, on, on park entry fees. And uh, now we have reduced from $80 to $70. And by 1st of July, it will be $60. So that's another incentive so that we can have our parks be affordable. And then the third thing is uh, visas for children under 16. Uh, that also makes uh, Kenya to be a f a friendly to family uh, tours and trips. So that's also a major, major breakthrough. And I appreciate the Ministry of Interior and Immigration Department who have cooperated to this. I believe this incentive in the next two years will have a quick recovery program. Uh, if we didn't have these incentives, we will take longer to recover. I believe by 2018, mid-2018, we will have recovered fully to the numbers that we were in 2011. 2014, our conferencing arrivals were 44,000. In 2015, there were 77,000. So you could see the scope of opportunity in conference tourism. And this year, with the, with the conference of UNCTAD and uh, TCAD and the other uh, major conferences, not necessarily government but private sector, we believe the figure can go up to 100,000 uh, in terms of conference in 2016. Uh, the opportunities are there. The only thing is that we need to improve three major things. One is security, two is infrastructure, and three is a product. In terms of security, the government has invested heavily on the security uh, sector. We have invested over 200 billion Kenya shillings, that's almost above, almost 15% of our, of, of our expen expenses of government. Uh, we have bought new vehicles, 2,500 vehicles, 10,000 recruits, more equipment, armored equipment uh, for the police. So, and training, capacity building in terms of addressing the issue of terrorism and other crimes. So we've invested enough, or a lot, uh, again, in, to, in, in, in security. The second one we have invested is, as government, we have invested in infrastructure, which is the roads, uh, particularly in the coast which have been neglected and for a long time no investment has been done on infrastructure. The issue of the ferry and its efficiency, the president visited there, took action. There's been improvement in terms of efficiency. 
the government is now going to buy two new ferries by end of this year and then a plan for a long-term solution which is a bridge is being designed currently and then the also the most important road that is uh, hampering the safari circuit is the Narok uh, uh, Masai Mara road which uh, again uh, the, 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 the dispute about who is supposed to invest into it. We have resolved with the Ministry of Transport that the government will do it and then those other issues will be resolved later. Because that is a main entrance into uh, the national park. And, and you know, Masai Mara is an important national park.